Hello friend, welcome back to Acre Homestead. I am having a dinner party at my house tomorrow, a barbecue, some family is in town, and I was gonna do all the cooking tomorrow. That is not how I like to do dinner parties. I prefer, if I can, to do the, mo the majority of the cooking the day before, if at all possible. I didn't think that was gonna happen, but it is happening. I have actually about a couple hours that I can go ahead and get as much done for this dinner party right now, and I don't have to do all of it tomorrow. So I'm gonna take advantage of this time I have, and we are gonna do a bunch of prep. I think I have four or five different recipes we're gonna make, and we need to set the table. We've got some really fun things we are gonna be doing today. I just washed my rice really well, and we are gonna make a cold rice salad, and we need to cook this in some chicken broth. We need two cups of chicken broth. This is some home canned chicken broth, and I'm gonna cook this in the Instant Pot. I have two cups of rice, and that's two cups of broth. I hit the rice setting, and now we have one thing going. The next thing I wanna get going for tomorrow is dessert. We are gonna make an old-fashioned pound cake, and we are gonna grill pineapple. I've never grilled pineapple. That's gonna be the fruit that we're gonna put on the top with some homemade whipped cream. But first, we need to bake the cake. So I just turned the oven on to 325 degrees. My husband made me waffles for breakfast, breakfast this morning, so I'm just washing out this bowl so that we can make this pound cake in the mixing bowl. I love making pound cakes. If you are new to baking from scratch, pound cakes are one of the easiest cakes to make. So I would encourage you, if you've never made a cake before, try making a pound cake. So this is an old fashioned pound cake recipe. It does have a little bit of a twist to the recipe because it has one block of cream cheese. And to that cream cheese, we're gonna add one and a half cups of butter. We're gonna cream the butter and cream cheese together. To the butter, we're gonna add three cups of white sugar. That's three and a quarter cups of white sugar. Pound cake gets its name from traditionally having a pound of sugar, a pound of butter, a pound of flour, and that is why there are three and a quarter cups of sugar in this. I was supposed to put one egg at a time and beat between adding the eggs, but I just put two eggs in there and I think it's gonna be okay. We need to put a total of six eggs into our pound cake. These are farm fresh eggs from eggs that live here on the homestead. And I just collected these eggs this morning, so they are nice and fresh. So that's four eggs. Five. Now we're gonna add our flavorings. So we're gonna add one and a half teaspoons of vanilla extract and almond extract. I measure with my heart when it comes to vanilla, so that's probably more like two teaspoons of vanilla. Now we're gonna add salt. So I just got in the kitchen and started cooking, and I didn't realize that my recipe, I was supposed to put, alternate the eggs and flour in between. I was supposed to put one egg half cup of flour, one egg, half cup of flour until all the flour was gone. But I did not see that until just now. So now we are gonna go ahead and add the flour. It calls for a cup and a half of cake flour. So I did have to go pick up some cake flour for this recipe. And a cup and a half of all-purpose flour. The difference between cake flour and all-purpose flour is cake flour has less gluten in it which helps kind of aid in having a nice and fluffy cake. And there's no baking powder or baking soda in this recipe. You're getting all of your lift in this cake from the eggs itself. And so by having the cake flour, 
that helps get you a nice light and fluffy cake as well. So we need three cups of flour total, but one and a half cups is coming from the cake flour, and one and a half cups is coming from just good old fashioned all purpose flour. And anytime I get into my flour containers, what I like to do is do a scoop of flour and fluff it up a little bit. I just scoop it and kind of fluff it just so that it's not quite so compacted going into a recipe. I learned that trick from, or ovens preheated, from Ina Gartner, my, one of my favorite all-time cooks. So this is very full. I'm gonna lock this. We're gonna get this mixing and I'm just rereading my recipe to make sure we have everything. Yep. I'm gonna make this pound cake in a bunch pan. That's what makes this pound cake so easy is you don't have to do any layers or anything like that. You just put it in your bun pan, you throw it in the oven, you let it cook. You don't even have to frost a pound cake. So that's another reason why bun cakes are so easy or pound cakes are so easy. That cake batter is done. We need to prepare the bun pan. I'm gonna spray it with some good old cooking spray. It says that we need a 10 cup bunt pan. I don't know what size my bunt pan is. So we will put some in here and see how full it gets. I may need to use two different containers to bake this cake. Because if I overfill the bunt pan, then it'll take too long to bake and the center won't be cooked. So I'm taking a pastry brush and I'm wiping that oil around to make sure it's evenly distributed. And then I am going to flour this bunt pan as well, because I don't want it to stick. Can you see how nice and yellow this batter is? I used a really high quality butter to make this recipe, and then I used really high quality farm fresh eggs. When you're making something super simple, like a pound cake where there's not very many ingredients and you can really taste the individual ingredients. This is when you want to try to use the best quality ingredients you can because you want to be able to let them shine in a recipe like this. I don't think this is a 10 cup bun pan. I don't think I want to put much more filling than that. I still have this much cake batter left. So with the leftover batter, I'm going to make a couple cupcakes. I have a half cup of butter I'm going to melt. This is for the pineapple. We're going to make a caramely sauce to go on the pineapple. Our cupcakes are ready to go in along with our pound cake. So we have already checked quite a few things off the list. So let's go ahead and get the pineapple ready to go to go on the grill. All these recipes that we are making today are new to me. I have not made any of them before. I wanted to try this old fashioned buttery pound cake because it had the cream cheese in it. And I have a lot of cream cheese in my house. And I thought that that would be kind of a fun variation of a pound cake. That's not true. I've made this rice salad many times. It's my mom's rice salad recipe. It's just the pound cake, the marinade for the meat, kebabs, I've never done steak kebabs on the grill before and I've never grilled pineapple before. So some of the recipes, are new and then one of them is tried and true probably it would be better when you're cooking for a party to make sure you use all recipes that you know are good but i like to live on the wild side and try new things all the time so to the butter we are going to add half a cup of brown sugar 
And if something doesn't turn out, Julia Child says never apologize for any recipe. So we will just make this for our guests and hopefully it tastes delicious. So this is what we're gonna marinate our pineapple in before we put it on the grill. I did turn the grill on because I want to grill the pineapple today and then I can chop it up really small and then it'll be ready to go on to the pound cake tomorrow. So this pineapple I've had in my fridge for a little bit and I wasn't sure if it was good anymore so I did purchase a second pineapple and this pineapple looks great. So I can cut both of them. I'm gonna cut these in spears so that they will be easy to grill. And then once we're done grilling them, I'll show you how I'm going to prep them to then serve on the pound cake. I like to cut the top and the bottom off the pineapple. And then I just take my knife and I go around the outside and I do like to make sure I get any of these pieces off. I don't like biting into those. So I usually do one pass around first and then I go through and I just clean it up and I make sure I get any of those. I make sure I get any of the seeds out. There is a core in the middle. We don't want that in our dessert because that's kind of tough and fibrous. So then I just cut the pineapple in quarters and then I cut that core out. So really, really easy. And you can snack on these because there is some good pineapple flavor and flesh on the outside there. So you don't have to just compost those. You can get a little bit more pineapple off of them. And then I'm gonna keep them whole just so that when I put them on the grill, it will be a lot easier. So I found a recipe that called for grilling pineapple and it was half a cup of butter, half a cup of brown sugar and you just mix that around. And that's what we're doing. So I have the grill turned on to heat up so that I can clean the grill grates really well. And so we can heat the grill up so that it will be ready as soon as we are ready to put this on the grill. The cold pineapple is turning my butter cold, it's kind of firming it up again. Okay, so we're just gonna set that aside and wait for the grill to warm up. I just put away all the cake dishes. I had my dishwasher unloaded this morning, thankfully, and so I was able to just go ahead and get those right into the dishwasher. The next thing we are gonna do is make the marinade for the kebabs. So this recipe says that you can marinate this meat for one hour up to 24 hours. So this is gonna be perfect. It will be in the marinade for probably about 18 hours or so by the time I get this in the marinade and then I get it on the grill tomorrow. I think I'm gonna make the marinade first. And okay, how should I do this? Do I put the meat on the kebabs and then throw it in the freezer and in the marinade or do I marinate the cubed meat and then put it on the kebabs? Okay, so I put, I make the marinade in a bowl and then we're gonna add the steak pieces to the marinade. We're gonna let that marinade and then tomorrow I will skewer the beef. Okay, so that's gonna be easy. We need lemon juice for the beef marinade and for the rice salad. So I'm gonna go ahead and prep the lemon juice for both of the recipes. And for the rice salad, we also need some lemon zest. So I just washed up these five lemons. That should be enough for everything. But if it's not, I can grab a few more lemons out of the refrigerator. And you can find all of these recipes linked down in the description box if you want to try out any of these recipes yourself. This rice salad is one of the perfect kind of summery salads. It's something different for a barbecue than a traditional potato salad or macaroni salad because it's a little bit lighter because we are gonna make a lemon, kind of like a lemon vinaigrette to dress the salad and it's a cold salad and it has so many different beautiful herbs. I did have to go buy 
all the herbs to go into this salad except for parsley. I've got a lot of parsley out in the garden. But hopefully here coming up soon, I will be able to grow all the herbs that when we make the salad later in the summer, we will be able to have homegrown herbs in it. So I'm just looking at the recipe. It calls for five tablespoons of lemon juice. So this is for the rice salad. Since I just zested the lemons in here, I'm gonna go ahead and just put the lemon juice in here as well. And you can use bottled lemon juice if you would like. I do find that for this recipe though, fresh is better because you can really taste the lemon flavor in it. That's one of the most prominent flavors in it. And so I just think you get a better flavor when you use fresh, but if all you have on hand is bottled, you can use bottled as well. All right, so there's our lemon juice. I'm gonna set this aside for later when we make our rice salad. Now in here, we're gonna make the marinade. Well, we're gonna make it in here, but I need to measure out the lemon juice for the beef marinade. And for this one, we need a quarter cup of lemon juice. This is the bowl that when I prep the beef, I'm going to just stick it in that bowl in the refrigerator. So that's why I'm gonna make the marinade in there, but I do need to first measure out my lemon juice. I am gonna follow this recipe. A lot of times when I cook, I just measure with my heart. I don't measure with measuring spoons, but because I've never made this recipe before, I am going to follow the recipe. I think the five lemons was probably the perfect amount for both of these recipes. To our lemon juice, we're gonna add a quarter cup of Worcestershire sauce, a half a cup of oil, I'm using avocado oil. Whoop! A third a cup of soy sauce. That's why I did not pour that over this. So we're gonna put that in there. That was the perfect amount for that. To this, we're gonna add some pepper, onion powder. This is homegrown onion powder. Some homegrown garlic going in. This recipe calls for Italian seasoning. I don't have Italian seasoning in my house. I have some homegrown basil that I'm gonna add in place of it and some homegrown oregano. And those are some of the flavors that are in Italian seasoning. So I think that's gonna work just fine. It called for one tablespoon. I'm just crushing up the leaves a little bit to help kind of release some of their flavor. And then I think Italian seasoning usually has rosemary and some other things in it as well, but I don't, I don't think I want to add that to this. I think the basil and the oregano and the garlic and everything else is going to be just fine. This smells incredible. Now I'm not going to add salt because my soy sauce is not low sodium and this meat is going to be marinating for 24 hours. So I don't want it to be too salty. So we're just going to call this good here. And I'm gonna set that aside while I put the rest of this stuff away. One of the really cool things about prepping today is I'm getting a bunch of this stuff dirty for multiple recipes. So I needed this for two recipes and I got it dirty one time. I can wash it, put it all the way, clean the kitchen, and then tomorrow it's gonna to be a lot easier when people come over. They're not gonna come over to like 5.30 and I will just be a lot less stressed tomorrow because all the food will be prepped and ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this cleaned up here. And then while I'm in the, I already got the beef out. So I do need to prep the beef in order to have them ready to put on kebabs. I'm gonna put my spices away. The rice is done in the Instant Pot. If you follow the directions on how to cook this, the directions are not for the Instant Pot. I just like to cook my rice in an Instant Pot. Before I prep the meat, I want to get the rice out of the Instant Pot. It is done and ready 
to be cooled off. Because this is a cold salad, we want to cool our rice really quickly. So we want to get it out of the instant pot and we kind of want to get it on a flat surface so that it can cool off and we can let it cool quickly and then we can get it into the refrigerator. This rice already smells so good because we cooked it in that chicken broth, but we need to get it cooling and we need to get it in the refrigerator as quickly as possible. So by kind of letting it get into a cooler dish and putting it in a thinner layer, I'll stir this a couple times and then we can get this in the refrigerator. But it's perfectly cooked, it's nice, light, and fluffy. That's because I washed the rice really well. I helped, what that does is that helps wash off the starch and so that they are more of individual rice granules instead of a sticky rice. And this is a jasmine rice and it smells divine. All right, I'm gonna set that aside. For the kebabs, we are gonna use a New York steak. There are gonna be eight people plus three kids, but two of the kids are too little to be eating. So I have, I think two, four, six, eight, nine steaks out. So I kind of plan for about one steak per person. The recipe called for two pounds of lean steak, such as sirloin or New York, and this is New York. So this is what I'm, I had in my freezer. This is from, I purchased a half of a, a side of a cow from a local farmer. And so this is what I had. So this is what I am going to be using. That's one of the cool things when you purchase meat from a local farmer is I paid the same price for this beautiful New York steak as I would for say ground beef. And so when you're having a party, I don't feel, it doesn't break the bank for me to serve a really nice cut of meat like this. So it's kind of cool. So what I'm doing is I am trimming off some of this fat because these are kebabs and they're gonna be cooked really quickly on a high heat on the grill. It's not gonna have time to render out these big chunks of fat. So I'm just cleaning these up a little bit. This steak is beautifully marbled, so there is plenty of fat in the actual meat, but I think it'll still be juicy. But I've never cooked steak kebabs before, so this is <laughs> something totally new for me. So I'm cutting them in about one inch chunks or so. I do not want to waste this beef trimmings that I just cut off this steak. I want to put this in a freezer bag and I'm gonna throw this in the freezer and then come next time I need to make broth, I am gonna throw this in with the broth because there's a lot of meat left on that. There's a lot of flavor in that. And the last thing I would wanna do would be to toss all of this away. I wanna make sure that I'm getting the most bang for my buck and that I'm respecting the animal by using as much of it as I can. So I'm gonna get my hands washed, I'm gonna get this straight into the dishwasher, and then we get to mix up our meat with our marinade. I hope this is enough meat for everybody because it definitely reduces down in size when you trim all of the excess fat off. My garlic pucks are starting to thaw, so I'm kind of breaking those up a little bit. We'll get this nice and stirred in. It smells incredible. The herbs, the garlic, the Worcestershire, really, really yummy smelling here. So I'm going to try to get as much of that beef into the marinade as possible. I will probably come through and stir this a couple times. There we go. I'm gonna keep this in here so that I don't have to get another spatula dirty. I am going to check on the pound. Oh yeah, they're done. <laughs> I can already tell. I just grabbed a, a cake tester, but those are done. Our cake is not done. I'm gonna put that more in the middle. Ooh, probably shouldn't move it actually. We're just gonna close that back up. I did grab a cake tester so I can test these cupcakes, but I'm pretty sure they're done. They're gold and brown and they puffed up really well. Oh yeah, those are done. I think I'm going to try to get them out of, yeah, this cupcake pan so that they don't overcook and continue to cook in the hot pan. 
How cute are these? I've never thought to make pound cake cupcakes before, and that's a really good idea for just a personal serving size. We have the marinade done in the refrigerator, and now I'm gonna get going on some of the components for the rice salad and for the kebabs. So for the kebabs, we are going to do red onion and bell pepper. Oh, and I need red onion and bell pepper for the rice salad as well, so I might as well go ahead and prep all of these at one time. So I just washed up my bell pepper, and I'm gonna cut these into, what does it say? One inch cubes. These knives are so awesome. These are some new knives I got recently. And do you see how sharp they are? I barely have to put any pressure and they just glide through that bell pepper really easily. Let me show you how easy it is gonna to be to dice but the bell pepper for the salad. I want a really fine, fine chop. And the sharper your knives, the easier it is to get a really fine dice on something. Just glides through that. I do have a discount code for these knives. I can link down in the description box if you're interested. But look how beautiful and what a fine dice I can get on this bell pepper with hardly any effort. A knife is one of the most important kitchen tools it's the fundamental of cooking. Look how beautiful dice we got on that. My sister-in-law is coming over for this party tomorrow and I was talking to her about what the menu was because she was asking if she could bring anything. And she said that last time they did kebabs for a party, they did build your own kebabs. And I thought that was a brilliant idea. If I had known about that before I went shopping for this party, I would have done that. But I think that this summer, that's definitely a party that I want to throw where you just have mushrooms and zucchini and maybe pineapple to put on your kebabs, a couple different types of meat and different marinades. You've got a chicken, a pork, a beef or something like that. And then you give everybody the skewers, you let them kind of build their own. And I thought that, that sounded so fun. I'm gonna go ahead and build these kebabs for everybody tomorrow because I don't have a ton of extra fun produce items. All I really have that's fresh right now are these onions and peppers. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and build them myself. But next time, I think that that's a brilliant idea. So we've got pepper and then I'm also gonna put some onions. So I'm cutting those about the same size and we'll skewer them tomorrow. I just want to get all these veggies prepped. So I'm going to put the lid on this. So the, the kebabs are basically done. All I have to do tomorrow is skewer them and then cook them. Easy peasy. I probably will skewer them in the morning so that I don't have to do that right before my family and friends come over. This onion is for the rice salad. I'm going to cut this about the same size, as close to it as I can, to these red peppers that we did over here. I'm only going to cut half of this onion for the salad. One trick to kind of get the spicy bite out of red onions is to run them under some cold water. So that is what I'm gonna do. I wanna finish making the dressing for this salad. So I'm gonna add some pepper, salt, olive oil, or this is avocado oil, but you could use avocado oil or olive oil. 
garlic. I'm gonna pour that into this container. And this is our dressing for the salad. This recipe calls for cashews, but when I was at the store, I saw these salted pistachios, and I thought that would be a really good substitution. So I'm gonna run my knife, just a really rough chop. Some of them will be whole, some of them will be chopped. But I love pistachios, this adds a really nice crunch to the salad. You could add walnuts or, al well, I don't know if walnuts would be good, but almonds would be good in this, and the pistachios I think are gonna be fabulous in it. And cashews would be really good because I've had cashews in it many times. These are salted, roasted nuts. This salad is not done yet, it is almost done. There are quite a few fresh herbs we're gonna add to it tomorrow, but I don't want to wash and chop those right now because I'm worried they're gonna turn brown. So we've got the bulk of the salad done, we'll just finish it off tomorrow. And then we've got our goodies for our skewers. All right, so I think it's time to finally grill those pineapples. Let's go ahead and clean the grill so we can get those on the grill. I want to check real quick. Our cake is not done yet, so we have gotten a lot done. In the time that cake is cooking, we have basically almost assembled the entire dinner for tomorrow. I do need to make sure this grill is nice and clean. It's been going for a good 20 minutes. because The last thing I cooked on it was chicken, so I don't want any of that on my pineapple. You can kind of see how the butter and sugar has hardened on that pineapple because that pineapple was cold from the refrigerator. And it's mostly going to melt, I think, on the grill. Oh yeah, you can already see the butter and the sugar. I don't think that this was a good idea. Yeah. Okay, so I am regretting putting the butter and the sugar on the pineapple. I think the pineapple probably would have tasted better if I had just cut it up and grilled it. So I'm gonna let all this butter burn off. I'm gonna get my pineapples rinsed off because they have a bunch of char black char on them and that's not what I want. I want them grilled, not char broiled. It's very spooky. So I'm actually gonna go inside and rinse these pineapples off and see if I can salvage them. <laughs> if I can, I hope I can. I'm gonna let that just burn off. I'm a little bit disappointed. You see that black? That's char. I don't want char. I want grill marks like this. So I'm gonna see if I can rinse that black stuff off. I sure hope I can. I just got all those pineapples washed up and I tasted them to make sure they don't taste bad and they taste fine. But I wanted to come back in here <laughs> and reread that recipe in case I just completely missed a step or something, which is definitely more than likely. So it says cut pineapple into one inch spears, half cup brown sugar, half cup melted butter, cinnamon. I went ahead and left the cinnamon out. Lay the pineapple spears in a pan, sprinkle lightly with cinnamon, Whisk together butter and brown sugar. If this seems thick, microwave it until it's pourable. Spread on top of the pineapple. Grill for seven to 10 minutes or until it's starting to turn golden brown. I always like to brush the excess sauce from the pan back onto the pineapple before serving. So I didn't do anything wrong. I just, there's way too much fat, on the, the way too much butter and sugar dripping down into the grill grates 
and it's still smoking and burning off like crazy. I hope that I can burn off that burnt flavor from the grill, and so only time will tell. <laughs> I'm disappointed. I thought that sounded so good. I'm even considering now just skipping the grill part because they do have a little bit of grill flavor, chopping it up, and maybe sprinkling a little just white sugar on it and letting that sit and the sugar and the juices from the pineapple kind of melt together like when you do strawberries, macerate, and then top that because we're going to put whipped cream on the top. Now I have to kind of decide. Let me go look at the grill. Okay, the grill is no longer on fire, which is a good sign. Well, that really did clean the grill grates a lot. Anything that was on the grill grates, even though I scraped it, is completely off the grill grates now. Okay, we're gonna try this again. That already is better. Yeah, that's already better. Round two was much better. I'm gonna put a nice fine chop on these pineapples. And then I think I am gonna sprinkle them with just a little bit of sugar so that they get kind of a syrup going. sprinkle maybe about two tablespoons of sugar onto our pineapple. I'm going to mix this together and the sugar should help draw out some of the moisture out of the pineapples and kind of create a little bit of a syrup or at least that's what I'm hoping for. My sister-in-law asked if there was anything she could bring to the party. I think I'm going to take her up on the offer and I am going to ask her to bring some strawberries sliced with a little bit of sugar on them in case this pineapple <laughs> topping is not the best. It's hard to go wrong with strawberries and pound cake and whipped cream. I am gonna be making whipped cream for the pound cake. And that's one thing when you're having a dinner party, if someone asks or offers to bring something, take them up on the help. So that's what I think I'm gonna do. We got everything prepped and done that we needed to get done today that I could do ahead of time. I still need to set the table. We are going to eat inside because I don't have enough shade out there, I don't think, for dinner. It's supposed to be in the 80s tomorrow, so I think it'll be too warm for the kids that will be here. So we'll eat inside, but we'll be able to kind of come in and out as we'd like. Let's check on the pound cake. Oh, it is almost done. I think I'm going to give it another three or four minutes. So in the time it took us to bake this pound cake, we got the meat marinated. We got the veggies all prepped for the kebabs. We have the pineapple done. Time will tell if that's a win. I tasted the pineapple. It tastes good. It's got kind of a grilled flavor, but I honestly think I like strawberries and I think I will like strawberries and pound cake better because that's a classic, perfect combination. And then I will make whipped cream tomorrow, but I still need to set the table. There are gonna be eight adults and three kids. Sorry if you can hear the dishwasher. I got the dishwasher going while the pineapple was on the grill. Our rice salad is almost done. And then for beverages, I think I'm just gonna serve water and I've got some different beverages, canned adult beverages in my refrigerator in my garage and some sodas and just carbonated water that people can have. But I think for today, I'm gonna call it. Josh has been working out in the garage, cleaning the garage. I think I'm gonna go head out there and help him. I got the kitchen almost clean. There's a couple dishes in the sink. My dishwasher's going. I need to put the Instant Pot away and I need to wipe down the counters. But the majority of the cooking and the majority of the cleaning is done. The rest of the house is pretty much clean. I don't really need to clean any of that. So let's get this pound cake out of the oven. 
got our recipe tester here. Oh my goodness, it's perfectly golden brown. Let's see if it's done. I'm glad that I did not put the whole, yeah, it's done. I'm glad that I did not put the whole recipe of batter in here because I don't think it would have taken too long to cook because this is a smaller cake pan. So that's like how beautiful that is. Hopefully I can turn it out just fine. I put the flour in there and that's supposed to help turn it out so it doesn't stick. I will let this pound cake cool for 10 minutes and then I will flip it out to let it cool on a cooling rack for the rest of the time. I went out and I helped Josh in the garage for a while and then I spent quite a bit of time out in the garden and I came back in and I thought, you know what I could do? I could get the table set up for tomorrow and I am just gonna pull out one of my folding tables and then I'm gonna put a tablecloth down. I don't have enough placemats for everybody to have a placemat, so the cool thing about tablecloths is I don't have to worry about placemats and it hides the fact that I am using a card table and my table. So it just kind of makes everything look a little bit cohesive and my cake had cooled enough to where I could turn it out. So I was going to turn it out and it does look like we had one little piece stick, but nothing that pulling it out of the cake pan and kind of smooshing it back onto the cake no one's going to know the difference and we'll just let this cool and enjoy it tomorrow. That recipe turned out really, really well and so did this recipe, friend. Let me tell you, this was such a good marinade. Something about the combination of the lemon juice, the Worcestershire, the soy sauce, it was phenomenal. Every single person loved it. This is later on the same day. I had a few minutes and I also thought, you know, I could probably just skewer these up. I did not soak the wooden skewers in water. I have heard that you can do that and I have done it before when I made some teriyaki chicken. I didn't do the grilling of it, my mom did, and it helps prevent some of the burning that can happen to the skewer, but I just didn't think it would be that big of a deal because there's not that much, there's like no sugar in this marinade, so I thought it wouldn't burn as much. So I just skipped that step. But if you're worried about your wooden skewers burning, go ahead and soak them in some water for a little bit before you skewer them up. So I just take some meat and I'm putting a piece of meat and then some pepper and some onion, meat, pepper, onion. I kind of did it a little bit random until I had all of the meat and the peppers skewered. I will definitely make this recipe again. We have the perfect amount of veggies to meat ratio. Hello friend, welcome back. We are going to finish pulling this dinner party together. It is the next day. We did the majority of the work yesterday, but today is the day of the party that we are gonna get the rest of this party pulled together. I just washed up a bunch of cilantro and parsley and mint, and we're gonna get this chopped up. It is 12, people are coming over around 5.30ish, and we'll probably eat dinner around six. I have not done anything in the kitchen for this party today at all, and we really don't have that much more to do to get this party all pulled together but we do need to finish the salad. This was one thing I didn't want to do yesterday. I didn't want these herbs to be chopped the day before because I was just worried that they might turn brown. But I think right now at noon is gonna be a perfect time to finish getting the salad thrown together. Here is the salad that we started yesterday and we're just gonna finish it here. I just put, did a nice rough chop on the cilantro, parsley, and mint. We've got our salad dressing here that we made up yesterday. And all I need to do is pour this over and stir this together.
Now that the salad is all put together, I'm going to pop it back in the fridge. I gave it a taste test to make sure that it didn't need any adjusting for seasonings. I put some heavy cream, sugar, and vanilla in the stand mixer to mix up some whipped cream because we're going to have whipped cream with our pound cake and our pineapple. And while that is whipping, I thought, you know what, it would be a good time to finish getting the dishes done. I unloaded the dishwasher early in the morning and so that I would have an empty dishwasher for any last little prep that I needed to do today and for putting any of the dishes, well, there's gonna be many dishes that my family will use for dinner. So that as soon as the dinner party is over, we can just, I can just throw those dishes right into the dishwasher. So here is our whipped cream, almost all mixed up here. You can kind of make whipped cream as thick or as thin as you want. I'm just tasting it to make sure it doesn't need any sugar or vanilla or anything and it's perfect. Homemade whipped cream is so easy to make and it's so worth the effort because it doesn't take any effort at all. I'm gonna pop this in the fridge and now we are ready to have a party. I have all the sides done. My mother-in-law is going to be bringing some macaroni and cheese. We had another family dinner recently and she made a bunch of macaroni and cheese. She made two pans and we only ate one, so she's gonna go ahead and bring one of those over. So we're gonna have that as a side as well. Another successful dinner party in the books. It was absolutely wonderful. That steak marinade was phenomenal. It is now a family favorite. Everybody loved it. My brother-in-law stepped in and did the grilling and it was just great. I really appreciate him doing that because I've never grilled kebabs or steak or anything like that. So I just hung out and watched him do it and I learned something which is awesome. My mother-in-law actually loaded the dishwasher and got the dishwasher going. So the only other dishes we have are the dishes from dessert which I still need to take care of. The grilled pineapple was so good and if I do that again I will just grill the pineapple and then put a little bit of sugar on the top and let it sit. It became juicy and wonderful. No need to add the sugar and butter. I was talking to my sister-in-law about that and she's like, yeah, of course that was gonna flame up like crazy. And it did. So I'm not sure, but I just wanna say pineapple was a hit and we already got the tablecloth taken care of. I need to take care of dessert. This whipped cream right here, I'm gonna enjoy in my coffee in the morning, which is gonna be fabulous. I cannot wait. And again, that steak marinade recipe, phenomenal. I will leave that link down in the description box to the blog that I found it on. It is a new family favorite. Everybody loved it. So I hope you enjoyed this. I really was just honored that you took time out of your day to spend time with me as we prepared for this family dinner on this Monday night. I hope it encouraged you or inspired you to maybe have a dinner party at your house and invite friends and family over to just enjoy a wonderful meal. Whether you make that meal from scratch, you pick up takeout, or you all do potluck style and you just have a meal together, sit down and enjoy spending time with your loved ones. I appreciate you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being you. And I can't wait to see you next time. Bye friend.